<laughs> one under the radar player who could be a star for each NFL team. Can you hear me? No. You yes, can I can. As a matter All of right. fact, thank That's you very good. much. Uh, for the Cardinals, they suggested Dennis Gardeck. Okay. Okay. Now you Who's can. Who's they? <laughs> CBS Sports. Okay, CBS Sports. Why are you yelling now? I can totally hear you just fine. Because, I, yeah, okay, good. All Don't right. worry about good? it. Good? Okay, yes. I'm very worried about it. Uh, Dennis Gardeck, you taking that as your answer, or do you have another answer? No, as a matter there? of fact, I, I'm not. Uh, not that Dennis Gardeck, the barbarian, of course, is not a good answer. It is. But uh, for me right now, it's Michael Wilson. Definitely Michael Wilson. Okay. No doubt about it right now. I think... I think he is the guy that is flying under the radar in 2024. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to help Michael an awful lot. I think Trey McBride is going to help him as well. I think the play-action game is going to help Michael Wilson take that next step. Um, I, I honestly think that Michael Wilson is a guy that could shock a lot of people based on the numbers he could post if, in fact, he stays healthy. Yeah, that's a good answer, and it's going to be hard to argue with that because just by the nature of the position he plays, he's he's in a spot where he could you know put up some stats too playing receiver. Like my immediate thought would be Kaiser White, but everybody knows who he is already, right? Yeah, that's a name. Nationally. Yeah, I would say so. Um, Mac Wilson, I could I could see your Michael Wilson and go with a Mac Wilson. He, I don't, he would be under the radar. He's he's on my list. I don't know that he's going to put up crazy numbers. I just think that Cardinals fans are going to like his game. So I'll go with B.J. Ojolari. Okay. Oh, I, I had B.J. on there as well. Uh, he's number four. You have four? Me. Number four, yeah. Oh, wow, I had okay. four guys that I thought might actually be under the radar. One. Number two is Greg Dorch. Uh, Greg Dorch, I, I think. Perennially under the radar, no matter what he does. Perennially, yes. That's a good word to use for him because he is right now. And Greg Dorch, I'm not just talking about his kick return prowess. I'm talking about him as the number three receiver in this offense going forward. I think Greg Dorch is going to have an excellent year. And if you if you press me on it, you could say Greg Dorch is going to be that guy. You know, I think it's going to be Michael Wilson once again. But Greg Dorch, I, I could definitely see that happening. Jalen Thompson is number three for me as really? well. Really? Okay. Jalen Thompson is a guy that I think last year, you know, there wasn't a lot of people talking about Buda Baker last year because the defense was so bad. Now, Buda did go to the Pro Bowl once again, but you know what? Um, sometimes you tend to get lost when your unit is bad overall. You and your individual talent gets lost from time to time. Yeah, you could make a case that pretty much anybody on the Cardinals, other than Kyler Murray, Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't know what, James Conner, maybe Buddha, maybe Trey McBride. You could almost make a case that anybody else qualifies uh, as under the radar. All those guys on I offense. I don't think Trey McBride's under the radar. No, no, I'm, I'm saying he's not. Oh, okay. He, he's one of, like, five okay. guys. Any, look, I know you're not going to love this, but anybody that helped a bunch of people's fantasy football teams last year, probably not under the radar, and I'm sure Trey McBride did. Yes. Uh, but other than, the, what, Kyler, Connor, Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey McBride, and maybe Buddha, I think the rest of the team qualifies probably as under the radar. Yes, I would agree with that. But once again, I had Michael Wilson, number one. I had Greg Dorch, number two. Jalen Thompson, number three. And B.J. Ojolari. Boy, I can't wait. I was really encouraged when we saw B.J. Ojolari. I was really encouraged when we talked to him. I mean, this is a guy, he's 261 pounds. He's put on some serious weight. He's going to be more of a defensive end that he is going to be an outside linebacker or an edge player. I think he's going to be more of a guy that is going to be put your hand in the dirt. Now, listen, if you tell me B.J. Ojolari can also drop off into coverage with a little fire zone, a little fire zone scheme where he could actually drop off the edge into coverage, man, that would be absolutely huge if he were able to still move and be that guy in, in coverage. Very cool to see. We'll see how that goes. All right, let's 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 circle back to the name that started all this and Dennis Gardeck and then put B.J. Ojolari there, too. Who leads this team in sacks this year? Best case scenario, who leads this team in sacks this oh, year? Oh, Darius Robinson. Yeah, okay. Best case scenario. Yeah. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. Um, I, I would also, you know what, I shouldn't have said that with such certainty. You said it with a lot of certainty. I know that because, honestly, when you think of B.J. Ojolari. Yeah. As your second-round pick from last year, 2023, 
a guy who got a late start, so to speak, on the season, and we all know why. And yet he did sh- he did flash. He did show a little something, something. And now if you're going to tell me that he would take that next step, double-digit sacks, that'd be huge. Yeah, either one of them, really. And I'm, I'm saying that under the assumption that Dennis Gardeck is just going to keep doing what he does. And he's going to get you six or seven sacks because that's what Dennis Gardeck does. He's perennially under the radar nationally, but he comes up with plays. Uh, I just want the bar. I, I want that to be like the bar that guys are clearing, not the 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 sack leader on the Cardinals this year. Because everything that I think that this team could be capable of, I don't know that they can do it if their leading sack guy has six. I don't know if that's going to work this year. But if you're telling me Gardeck has six and Ojolari has eight and Darius Robinson has five, Okay, then we have something, right? Yeah, you tell me that, Michael. See, I'm starting to say right now when I finish questions. See, you say it. Yeah. I'm not the one who says right. No, no, that's the first time it's ever happened. Okay, no, stop. (laughs) But you've started it. I'm not the guy, right? Well, I do say right from time to time, but let me just say this. Michael Wilson, this is a guy that is going to be singled up a lot. This guy's going to get the opportunity to catch some balls, especially vertically. That's what I really want to see. That That's something to look for in the preseason. That is something to look for when the Arizona Cardinals go and work out against other teams like the Indianapolis Colts, right, when they go and do that and practice. That's something I'm going to watch closely. Just Michael Wilson, one-on-one against press, and how many times he might get the fade route on the backside and how many times Kyler Murray might give him that ball on the backside with a fade. He, you tell me that he's going to catch a lot of contested balls, and I'll tell you right now, that's going to happen over and over. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.